You see this word, arur, it means, it means cursed. It's a terrifying word. It's why you see in Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, many that sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to Chaye Olam, and some to, and this is why this word is so scary, some to Dera'on Olam. Dera'on Olam, that's, that's what happens if you're cursed. And it says, cursed is anyone who does not uphold the words of this Torah to do them. And all the people said, Amen. This is why you have in Bereshus chapter 3 verse 15, the promise of a Savior who will crush Satan's head. And then this is taken uh, forward in Isaiah where the Savior makes an exchange, taking your transgressions and giving you his righteousness. Moshiach Tzidkenu. Now, this word is scary, but this word is also said by a rabbi, uh, and if you go to Bible Hub, you'll see this in the Orthodox uh, Hebrew Bible you will see that it says, but uh, also if we are uh, a malach, uh, an angel from heaven, uh, come and preach, uh, to come to preach to you a basara, uh, a good news gospel other than uh, this which we preached to you, Harem Yeh, let him be cursed. Let him be under the harem band. The band, B-A-N, the band of harem. C-H-E-R-E-M. Let him be under that. So the, here the curse is coming at you two ways. If you don't up, uphold all the words of the Torah to do them, and if you preach another gospel. Now this is where I would like you to go to uh, Google and just Google Phil Goble, and you will see this right here. And when you go to the bio page, right here, you will see that there is a certain content of the good news. You don't, you don't just make up whatever good news you want. If there's a dead Christ, a false Christ, named Schneerson in Crown Heights, or I should say buried in Old Montefiore Cemetery, you don't just create a Basura Sagheola around him. No, that is a different Basura Sagheola. And uh, what I want to show you here on the bio page is we are saved by the foolishness of preaching, and the preaching has a content. And uh, it has a proclamation. And it goes something like this. And this is what I heard. See this? Kerygma, the proclamation, which is cried out by the Kerygs, the, um, the herald who comes with the message. Just like as... Uh, ben David, Avshalom was hanging, pierced on the tree. A herald was sent to say, basically, Musar Shalomenu, Allah, the, the chastisement that brought us peace was upon him. On Ben David, now we have peace. Now the civil war is over because he died, like the Kohen Gadol. Uh, 
uh, who dies, and then you have the uh, jubilee. You have peace. And, uh, and for me, at the age of 28, in 1971, the kerygma went something like this, and I'm giving you what the kerygma is from the Brit Hadashah. This is the gospel. Any other gospel is a false gospel, and any other gospel has a curse. If you want a curse, okay, go ahead and preach a false gospel. Phil Goebel, at the age of 28, it has become right now for you the latter days, the last days. Uh, it is right now for you, your last chance to escape. Now, you see, there you have to escape the wrath to come. That's part of the gospel. And right now, you must accept that your gold redeemer, your savior, has been born. He was born in Bethlehem. Has lived. He lived in Israel. Has ministered. He ministered to thousands of people. Healing them, preaching, doing many wonderful mitzvahs and wonders, signs and wonders, verifying his preaching. He has died for you personally. If I'd been the only person in the world, he would have still had to die and he would have still been willing to die for me. He loved me and has stood up alive from the grave as judge. Now, you see, when he walks out of the empty tomb... He's not just some Joe walking out of the empty tomb. He is the eschatological Shofet, Kol Haaretz. And his great white throne is where he will sit. And everyone who has preached a different gospel, or who has not upheld all the words of the Torah to do them, will find that if they have rejected his offering, his Hasham guilt offering, Isaiah 53, uh, they will find that they have to deal with the judge and with the consequences. And that for you, Phil Goebel, the Holy Spirit has come to convict you of sin. I was weeping and weeping and weeping and weeping for weeks. And of God's righteousness, I had the fear of God. I knew I was a sinner and that God was a righteous judge. And of the coming judgment, I knew that I was in deep trouble with God. When your goal redeemer Savior returns, the, the uh, return of the Lord, when he judges the quick and the dead, and that you must right now, Phil Goble, turn from sin and receive the Father's offer of forgiveness and the Holy Spirit, and salvation. There is salvation in no other name. Don't give me the name Menachem. That is not the name. Uh, it may be in rabbinic literature. It's not the name given in the Scriptures. The Scriptures give the name very specifically, Yeshua, Yehoshua. Zechariah chapter uh, 6, verses 11 and 12, Ezra 3, 8. And in the Brit Hadashah, both words are translated by the same Greek word, Isus. Whether you're talking about Joshua ben Nun, uh, the successor of Moses in Acts, uh, where Stephen is preaching there in Acts chapter 6 and 7, I think it is. Uh, that name is the same name in Mark, when it says, this is the Basurus HaGeolah of Yeshua HaMashiach. So, whether it's Joshua, Yehoshua, or Yeshua, it's all the same name. There's no other name under heaven whereby you must be saved. And this name was given not only by the Malach, the angel, who came to Miriam and uh, the stepfather, David, uh, from from uh, the, the line of David, Yeshua ben David, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Yosef ben David, the angel that came and gave the name. But the name was already given already by, by uh, Zechariah in chapter 6. That, the, uh, that Yeshua or Yehoshua ben Yehotzadak, the high priest uh, 
the post-exilic high priest coming back from the Golas of Babylon, rebuilding the second Beis HaMikdash, uh, Zechariah walks up to him and tells him that his name is the Moshiach. So the, the Moshiach will be Yeshua HaMashiach. It will not be uh, Menachem HaMashiach. And uh, so uh, that, that was what I had to believe. That was the uh, proclamation that I heard, the kerygma, that which is cried out by the kerix, the, the herald, and as then in 1971, so in the beginning, all the Jewish Mishihistim in Acts chapter 21, who were zealous for the Torah, who had Messianic synagogues, who were not assimilated, who were part of the uh, Shalichus of, of, of uh, Kepha, and uh, Yohanan and Yaakov, uh, they were the Jewish wing that was going out to the ends of the earth, preaching to the Jews. Now Barnabas and, and Rabbi Shaul went to the non-Jews. When I wrote the book, Everything You Need to Grow a Messianic Synagogue, in 1974, and you will see it here, you just scroll down to 1974, and you will see this book. Um, it's um, right here, Everything You Need to Grow a Messianic Synagogue, and here it is. When I began writing this book, I followed the model uh, that you have in Acts chapter 21, where they are zealous for the Jews, zealous for the Torah of the Jews, zealous for the Moshiach ben Dovid of the Jews, and zealous to preach the Basurus HaGeolah to the ends of the earth to the Jews. These were the Mishihistim of the first century. They saw Yeshua in every verse, in every word of the Torah. And he's there. If you have the Ruach HaKodesh, you can see him. And uh, that's why they were zealous for the Torah. And they preached the, the uh, Basurus HaGeolah, the true Basurus HaGeolah of Yeshua HaMashiach, so that people could escape the curse and the wrath of the Torah uh, that you see there in Deuteronomy 27, verse 26, Devarim 27, 26, and so that you could escape the curse of preaching a false Mashiach or a false gospel. So the people in Crown Heights are in double trouble with God. They could jump around all they want with the Hanukkah menorah and all this, if they're preaching a different gospel, they're in big trouble with Almighty God. And that's why I'm down there giving these Bibles out like a voice in the wilderness, trying to uh, uh, distribute the Lubavitcher Bible that we translated specifically for them. We backed up all the truck, uh, we backed up the truck and we took the ultra kosher messianic terminology wrongfully applied to the dead Christ Schneerson, and we rightfully applied them to the living Moshiach, Yahushua, Yeshua, the Messiah. Now, friends, uh, well, I, I, got, I, I became a believer when I, when I was 28 years old. I'm now almost 78, 50 years later. And you know what? I'm going to meet him. When I leave this world, I'm going to meet him. I'm not going to meet anybody moldering in the grave in Old Montefiore Cemetery. I'm not going to meet any dead Christ, any false Christ. I'm going to meet the real, the real Mashiach. 
and I'm doing everything I possibly can, living a sacrificial lifestyle, taking risks, uh, denying myself. Uh, I'm doing everything I can, and the people around me are doing everything they can to help me. And the people who are contributing to our ministry are doing everything they can so that you will have the living, true Basurus Hageola of redemption. You couldn't get out of Egypt unless the little lamb had his blood put on the doorposts of your house. Unless he did that, the, the uh, wrath of God would not skip you. You would be uh, terminated, your firstborn. That, that's the symbol of your future as a family. It was over for you. You had a choice. Either the blood of the lamb or the wrath of Hashem. You still have the same choice today because he died when the little lambs were dying. He died on Nisan 14, 3793. He died for you, for you personally. He's not willing that you perish. He did everything he possibly could to save you. And I'm doing everything I possibly can to get his true message to you. Meanwhile, you are being bombarded by a false message. Lord, I want to pray right now for the Habadniks. I want to ask you, Lord, to open their eyes, open their ears, open their heart. Give them an experience like you gave King Dovid. He was undone. Natan, the prophet, had, had come into the palace and pointed the finger at him. You are the man. You are lost. You have broken the, the Aseris Hadabros. You say, oh, I, I'm, a, I'm a righteous rabbi. I never did that. Yes, you did. You've lied. You've stolen. You've coveted. You've done certain things that are wrong. And now you're involved in the uh, organization that promotes a false messiah. So you're really in trouble. And you're preaching a gospel that is not the true gospel. So you're really, 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 really in trouble. And I can only pray that as the gospel is preached to you, and I'm not doing a very good job of it right now, but I'm trying, that somehow the tears of the Holy Spirit, the tears of repentance, the tears of the wooing of the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will sit and weep and weep and weep like I did for weeks. And then you will reach out to the one who loves you and hold on to him and never let loose of him. No matter what any charlatans may say who want to pull you back into the darkness with them, who are jealous of you because you have found the light and they haven't, that, that you will resist the devil and that you will take the mikvah, the martyr's mikvah, and you will go on in God, and you will find uh, a Havrusa uh, partner uh, that you can fellowship with every week so that you have a uh, the at least the beginnings of a Messianic synagogue. And Lord, I pray right now that this will happen. I pray that it will happen imminently. During this Han Hanukkah season, it will happen. The light of the world will begin to shine on these well-meaning but lost people who are leading a vanguard of uh, Pied Pipers over the cliff, the blind leading the blind. Amen.